Welcome to the CSUN video learning module on writing balanced chemical equations. My name is Simon Garrett. In this video, we'll give examples of writing balanced chemical equations. This is part one and is focused on examples where the chemical substances are given as chemical formulas. You won't need a calculator, but you should review your lecture notes and textbook before getting started. Here's your first question. Balance the equation C plus O2, making CO2. Pause the video here and work out the answer. Ready? The first step is to count the number of each kind of atom on both the left and the right side of the arrow. This does a couple of things. First, it will tell us which atoms we should focus our attention on for balancing. Second, it will tell us whether the equation is balanced right now. Some equations are already balanced, and so we don't need to go further. In this case, there is one C and two O atoms on the left side of the arrow. Remember, the subscript 2 in O2 multiplies the element directly in front of it. On the right side of the arrow, there is one C and two O atoms also. So this equation is balanced as it is, and we don't need to go any further. Question 2. Balance the equation Ag plus Cl2 makes AgCl. Pause the video here and work out your answer. Okay, the first step is to count the number of each type of atom on both the left and the right side of the equation. On the left we have 1Ag and 2Cl atoms. On the right we have 1Ag and 1Cl atom. Clearly, this is not balanced, and we need to focus our initial attention on the Cl atoms. To balance the equation, we'll add coefficients. These are numbers that go before the chemical formulas, and whose effect is to multiply everything in the formula by that number. We can add coefficients to any reactant, or product, or both. Here I've written out the initial equation again. We know it's unbalanced. We can see two Cl atoms on the left, but only one on the right. The simplest solution I can see is to add a coefficient of 2 before the AgCl. This gives us two Cl atoms on the left and right. But wait, this equation is still not balanced, because we now have two Ag atoms on the right and only one on the left. I don't want to change the coefficient I just wrote, because then I'll be going a step backwards. Instead, I'll put a 2 coefficient in front of the Ag on the left. I think I've done it. But we should always do one last check by counting atoms in our final version of the equation. We now have 2 Ag and 2 Cl on the left, and 2 Ag and 2 Cl on the right. This equation is now balanced. By the way, I've written out the equation several times so you can see the step-by-step -step changes I've made. You'll probably write it out once and change the coefficients in it as you go along. How was that? Let's try another one. Question 3. Balance the equation N2 plus H2, making NH3. Pause the video here, figure out your answer. Okay. The first step is to count the number of each kind of atom on the left and right side of the equation. On the left, we have 2n and 2h atoms. On the right, we have 1n and 3h atoms. This equation is not balanced, and we need to look at both n and h atoms. To balance the equation, we'll add coefficients. Remember, these are numbers that go before the chemical formulas to multiply everything in the formula by the coefficient. We can add coefficients to any chemical formula in the equation. Here's the initial equation again. I usually start with the left side of the equation and go through it atom by atom. So starting with n, I can see I have 2 on the left, but only 1 on the right. But if I add a coefficient of 2 before the NH3, I can balance the n atoms. Now we can look at the next atom, the H. I've got 2 on the left, and now 6 on the right. Be careful. I have 3 H atoms in each NH3 molecule. 
but the coefficient 2 means I have two molecules, or six H atoms. Clearly, to get six H atoms on the left, I can add a coefficient of three before the H2. I think that's it, but we should check by counting atoms. Our last equation has two N on the left and right, and six H on the left and right. Success. So far so good? Let's try another one. Question four. Balance the equation P plus O2, making P2O5. As usual, stop the video here and figure out your answer. Here we go. The first step is to count the number of each atom in the given equation. On the left, we have one P and two O atoms. On the right, we have 2p and 5o atoms. This equation's not balanced. Both p and o are unbalanced here. To balance the equation, we'll insert coefficients. We can insert coefficients before any substance in the equation. On the left side, I have 1p and 2o atoms. Here's the initial equation. I'll start on the left side with the p atoms. I can see I have one p on the left and two on the right. So I'll insert a coefficient two before the p on the left and I'll balance the p atoms. Now we can look at the next atom, the o. I've got two o atoms on the left and five on the right. How do I turn two into five? I can multiply by five over two or 2.5. So I'll insert this coefficient of 2.5 before the O2 molecule on the left. A quick count tells me I've now balanced this equation. But this is not how we usually like to write chemical equations. The 2.5 coefficient implies 2.5 molecules, and this isn't good chemical common sense. We can't have a half a molecule. We need to work on this so that all the coefficients are integers or whole numbers. The way to do this is to multiply all the coefficients, including the unwritten ones, by two. All my coefficients have doubled. This is the smallest set of coefficients still in the same ratio as my previous version of the equation. Now we have a properly balanced equation. One last check. Our final equation has 4p on the left and right, and 10o on the left and right. Done it. Question 5. Balance the equation Ca plus H2O, making CaOH twice, calcium hydroxide, plus H2. Pause the video here and work out the answer. Let's go. First, we'll count the atoms in the given equation. Be careful here. Notice that on the right side of the arrow, H appears in two substances. We must be careful to make sure we count all the H atoms on the right. On the left, we have one Ca, two H, and one O atom. On the right, we have one Ca, four H, and two O atoms. The equation is not balanced as is. Both H and O are unbalanced. To balance the equation, we'll insert coefficients as before. Here's the initial equation. Starting on the left side with the Ca atoms, I can see I have one Ca atom on the left and right, so no coefficients necessary yet. The next element is H, with two on the left and four on the right. Adding a coefficient of two before the H2O on the left side, will give me the four H atoms I need for the right. The final atom is the O. I've got two O atoms on the left and on the right. Be careful with subscripts here. The subscript two in the calcium hydroxide formula works on everything in parentheses before it. This means two H and two O atoms in calcium hydroxide. Overall, I think by adding that two before the H2O, I've automatically balanced the O atoms too. A final check. We have one Ca on the left and right, 
for H on the left and right, and 2O on the left and right. Well done. This one looked trickier than it was. Question 6. Balance the equation Fe plus O2, making Fe2O3, iron 3 oxide. Pause the video now to work on the answer. All right, first we'll count the atoms in the given equation. We have one Fe on the left and two on the right. We have two O atoms on the left and three on the right. So the equation is not balanced. Both Fe and O are unbalanced. To balance the equation, we'll insert coefficients as usual. Here's the given equation. Starting on the left side with the Fe atoms, I can see that adding a coefficient of two before the Fe on the left will balance the Fe atoms. Now we'll tackle the O. We have two O atoms on the left and three on the right. To turn two into three, I multiply by three over two, or 1.5. So I'll add the coefficient of 1.5 before the O2 on the left side. We're almost there. We simply have to get rid of the non-integer 1.5. To do this, we'll multiply all coefficients by 2. This gives the final version of the equation. These coefficients are all integers, and I cannot make them any smaller and still keep the same ratio between them. So this is balanced. One final check. There are 4 Fe and 6 O on the left, and 4 Fe and 6 O on the right. Finished. Let's try question 7. Balance the equation Al2O3 plus Mg, producing Al plus MgO. Pause the video here, figure out your answer. Okay, first we'll count the atoms in the equation in the question. It's not balanced because there are two Al on the left and one on the right, three O on the left and one on the right, and one mg on the left and one on the right. We'll balance the equation by adding coefficients starting on the left side of the equation. Here's the equation in the question. Starting with the Al atoms, adding a coefficient of 2 before the Al on the product side will balance the Al atoms. Now we'll try the O. We have three O atoms on the left and only one on the right. So we'll need to add a coefficient of 3 before the MgO on the product side. Lastly, we have to balance the magnesium atoms. We have 3 on the right side, and so we'll add the coefficient of 3 to the left side before Mg. This gives the correct balanced equation. It's easy to skip the final step to check the atoms, but it really is worth it. Many students follow the steps and think they have the right answer, then discover a mistake at this step. So, there are two Al on the left and right, three O on the left and right, and three Mg on the left and right. Great. This is our final question today. Balance the equation C3H8 propane plus O2 producing CO2 plus water. Pause the video now. Here we go. First we'll count up the atoms in the equation. There are three C atoms on the left and only one on the right. We can already see this is not balanced. Finishing up, we have eight H atoms on the left and two on the right, and two O atoms on the left and three on the right. Again, be careful when atoms appear in two substances on the left or the right. Adding coefficients. This is the starting point, the equation in the question. Starting with the C atoms, I'll add a coefficient of 3 before the CO2 on the right side to balance the C atoms. The next atom is H. We have 8 H atoms on the left and only 2 on the right. So we'll add the coefficient of 4 before the H2O to fix this problem. 
Finally, we have to balance the O atoms. We don't want to undo the work we've done on the product side so far, so we'd like to leave those coefficients alone. There are six O atoms associated with the three CO2 molecules, plus another four associated with the four water molecules. This makes a total of 10 O atoms on the right. So we'll add the coefficient of five before the O2 on the reactant side to give 10 O atoms on either side. This is the balanced equation. Final check. There are three C atoms on the left and right, eight H atoms on the left and right, and 10 O atoms on the left and right. Fantastic. Let's review our strategy for these kinds of problems. The first step is to check for initial balance by calculating the number of each kind of atom on the left and the right side of the arrow. Next, we'll add coefficients wherever we want to balance each atom. I start on the left and work and go through one by one. But the order doesn't really matter. Watch out for the subscripts, element groups in parentheses, and atoms appearing in multiple places on the left or the right. If balancing produces non-integer coefficients, eliminate them by multiplying all coefficients by a common value. Often, doubling all the coefficients will do this. Finally, check the final equation by counting the number of each kind of atom on each side. Don't skip this final step.